Good evening. I bid you welcome. Tonight, I will give you a brief introduction to one of my children of the night, bats. Let us begin to demystify these spooky creatures, their habits, and their importance to us all, mortal and immortal. This is a part of a Bat Week series, so subscribe to this channel to learn how different cultures see bats later this week. Let's get into some background. Bats are mammals from the order Chiroptera, which includes over 1,400 species. This makes bats the second most speciose group of mammals after rodents. Bats make up approximately a quarter of all mammal species. Despite some superficial similarities between bats and rodents, the two orders are not closely related, with the most recent genetic research suggesting that bats are more closely related to carnivores, hoofed mammals, and whales than they are rodents. There are two categories that bats are divided into, Megachiroptera, the megabats, and Microchiroptera, the microbats. The megabats, as their name suggests, are generally larger than microbats, and their diets consist exclusively of fruit, nectar, or pollen. No microbats hibernate, and they are found exclusively in the tropics of the Old World. Microbats are generally smaller than megabats, though the largest microbat is larger than the smallest megabat. One of the key traits of microbats is their use of echolocation in their search of food. While there is one genus of megabats, Rosettus, that can use simple echolocation, microbats have a far more sophisticated method of echolocation that grants these fluttery friends great accuracy. The earliest fossil evidence of flying chiropterans dates back to the Eocene era, around 55 million years ago. This makes bats the third group of vertebrates to evolve powered flight after the pterosaurs and the birds, and the only mammals to be capable of true flight. As covered in a previous video, all other mammals, including flying squirrels and sugar gliders, can at best glide from place to place. Microbats can be found on every continent except Antarctica, but the diversity is greatest in the tropical forests of Latin America and Southeast Asia, where in total number of species, bats sometimes outnumber all other mammal species combined. In the United States and Canada, there are more than 40 species of bats. With so many species, it is unsurprising that bats inhabit a wide variety of habitats, including rainforests, temperate forests, grasslands, mountains, deserts, marshes, swamps, agricultural and urban environments. Bats tend to roost or sleep in a variety of dwellings, such as caves, crevices, trees, under logs, and even human dwellings, depending on the species. Polar regions and a few isolated islands are the only places on this planet you will not find any bats. Over 70% of bat species feed on insects, and many tropical species eat fruit and nectar. A number of bat species have specialized to hunt and eat different types of meat, including frogs, fish, birds, or other small rodents. Of the more than 1,400 species of bats, only three drink blood the common vampire bat, the white-winged vampire bat, and the hairy-legged vampire bat. If you want to learn more spooky facts about vampire bats, then check out this video all about them. Despite their bad reputation in much of the world, bats are vital contributors to the world's ecosystems and economies. Let us have a look at a few of the niches bats fill. Starting off strong with pollination. Bats that feed on nectar, pollen, and fruit carry and transfer pollen from one plant to another plant. Some of the fruits you can thank bats for include mangoes, bananas, durian, guava, figs, dates, and agave. In fact, there are over 300 tropical plants that are pollinated by bats alone, making them a keystone species in many regions. Without bats, fruit crops across the globe would suffer tremendously. Seed dispersal is another important ecological service bats provide. Fruit-eating bats spread seeds through their guano, the technical term for bat poop. 
Seeds dropped by bats can account for up to 95% of forest regrowth on cleared land. This makes bats a vital player in reforestation and healthy forest maintenance. Insectivorous bats are particularly important in managing pests that can damage crops and overrun ecosystems when left unchecked. In the United States and Canada, bats provide the equivalent of nearly $6 billion worth of pest control services annually. The last service bats provide comes from an unexpected place. Bat guano, much like cow manure, serves as a potent fertilizer both in the wild and in the agricultural industry. Guano is high in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and was vital in the early stages of intensive farming during the 19th century prior to the advent of synthesized fertilizers. While guano as fertilizer has largely died out in North America and Europe, it is still used in farming in India, Pakistan, and Iran. Despite the many benefits bats bring to both the environment and humanity, this order of mammals is experiencing global population declines. There are a variety of factors contributing to these declines, and not all of them are well understood. Currently, North America's biggest challenge to bats is white-nosed syndrome, a fungal infection that affects the skin on the muzzles and wings of hibernating bats. This fungus is originally from Europe. Eurasian bats are largely unaffected, but introduction to North America has been devastating to native bat populations. While the means of its introduction in North America is unknown, the impacts of white-nose syndrome are severe. White-nose syndrome primarily kills bats as they hibernate through winter. The fungus begins to take hold when bats enter torpor, a state of slowed metabolism and decreased physiological activity that bats enter during hibernation. White nose syndrome primarily affects the wings as well as the nose, muzzle, and ears of bats. Not only does it affect the skin, but research into the disease has found that it also impairs bats' ability to thermoregulate, maintain a healthy body temperature. Nearly half of all North American bats are being affected by white-nose syndrome, and in many cases, populations have been almost entirely decimated by the disease. North American bats have next to no defenses against the disease, leading to a 90% fatality rate in some species. In Canada, there are five species of bat now identified as species at risk, including the little brown bat, northern long-eared bat, tricolored bat, spotted pat, bat, and pallid bat. Little brown and northern long-eared bats have each seen their populations drop by more than 90% since 2010. Similarly, extreme declines have also been seen across the United States. Despite the risks to bat populations, there is some hope for recovery. The fungus that causes white-nose syndrome is a psychrophile, meaning it thrives in cold environments and in this case cannot grow in temperatures over 20 degrees Celsius. It has also been dubbed a vampire fungus because of its inability to repair UV damage. These may be weaknesses researchers can exploit one day to help protect and treat bats. There are also things we can all do to be bat friendly. Start spreading awareness about the importance of bats. These poor creatures of the night are often misunderstood and wrongfully demonized and need all the help they can get. Avoid pesticide and herbicide use as much as possible. Counterintuitive as it may seem, killing insects only makes it harder for nature's exterminators to thrive and manage pests on their own. And a single bat can eat more than 3,000 insects a night, and they are the primary predators of nocturnal flying insects. If there are any dead or dying trees on your property and they are not a safety risk, consider leaving them as a potential roosting site for bats. You can also consider having a bat house installed and creating a roosting habitat. Providing shelter for bats is a great way to promote a healthy environment, and when not disturbed or attacked, bats make quite amicable tenants, leaving their human and animal neighbors alone. Lastly, please remove unwanted bats humanely. If you discover a bat that is out during the day or behaving unusually, report the sighting to your local authority and follow their guidance. Now, my chiroptering conservationists, you have the knowledge and the tools to go out into the world and dispel bat myths. 
I hope you have a wonderful night.